Okay, well I can't get the whole uh, press in frame uh, and I'm really stretching to get to that pedal. But anyway, this will, this will show you how it works. reason I have it so high is because you know coil springs the force is uh, proportional to the deflection and I did need to get it extended a little bit to be able to retract it quickly so uh, I mean I, I drilled extra holes in the frame to be able to get these two closer together and I think what I'm gonna do is uh, maybe get some more plate and uh, build this up some so it doesn't have to come back too far um, like maybe ideally, if this was an inch spacing when it was at rest, it would uh, it work real fine. Or what I could do is put some maybe uh, spacers here, uh, and that would you know, keep it extended so I get that spring tension. But then uh, you have about an inch space here. So anyway, let me uh, go to the other side and kind of do a little better demonstration of this with a piece of wood. So you probably won't run out of air. You can hear my compressors running, but uh, you know when you're mashing Damascus or drawing something out, you know you're gonna you're gonna have to go reheat before the air compressor runs out. I've got a uh, I think it's a three horsepower, eighty gallon air compressor, and uh, it'll be plenty adequate. But let me show you another view of the operation. I got the foot pedal down here, and uh, this is a little better view. save you a little bit of trouble because I can give you these dimensions uh, pretty quickly. Uh, this, this bottom bracket here, that's one inch by quarter. I'm sorry, there you go. One inch by quarter flat bar. I just got it at Lowe's. And it is six and three eighths inches long. Now this was beveled because uh, it was from a different project, but I actually flushed it up at the bottom uh, of this uh, little bracket here. And it's also flushed it up Sorry, flush it up on this side. So flush it here, flush it on the bottom. And the bracket I'm talking about is that bracket, right? You got one on this side too. So flush it at the bottom, 
flush it on the side, six and three eighths inches long. And you see how it's welded? The side arm is butted up to it, right? E even at the top. And this side arm, I believe, was 14 inches long, but that's not, you know, that's not a critical dimension. Okay, it's 13 inches long. So this one is 13, could be 14. Uh, I made it a little bit longer just to, in case I needed to move the hole around. You know, and this right here, I just, you know, it was kind of trial and error to get it working right. But, uh, so this is 3 8 bolt, and it does need to be able to slide around this way. And the reason being was that, remember the, I said the valve was cocked up at a 20 degree angle. So the plane of rotation is this way. So as the arm moves back and forth, this right here, I mean, it moves into a different plane this way. And so you'll need some playback here. All right, let's see. Okay, one other in, important point to make is, I'm sorry, I keep smacking my lips. There's a guy on YouTube I was watching the other day. He like smacked his lips every three words. Drove me crazy. So I apologize, I'm doing it too, but hopefully not so frequently that it's uh, you know turning you off. So I will try not to do that. Damn it, I did it again. Okay, sorry. <laughs> anyway. This arm here, originally I calculated it to be seven inches long when I thought I could just, you know, put a connection at the end and just have it be seven inches. But like I said, I needed some adjustability. But right now, let me grab my, my tape measure. And my length overall from the center of that pin to probably like the center is still about, you know, still about seven inches. Right, that's what I calculated. Now, this right here, I've got about an eighth of an inch of play either way. If I need to make it shorter, make it a little bit longer, I, I needed that extra play. Now when you, okay, moving on to another point. When you tack weld this, what I did was, uh, hang on, let me, I gotta kill the air supply for a second. All right, so I disconnected the air supply just so I could demonstrate this. Before I tack welded this, I put the ram in the fully retracted position because I wanted to know, I wanted to see what the, you know, the fully closed position was. When you hold this in place, you need to make sure that you're above horizontal so that when the ram extends, it, you know, opens the valve, it doesn't get hung up. And, uh, Smack my lips again, sorry. All right, so closed. Now, I, I didn't go all the way closed. And I actually took this bracket here and moved it out some because, again, I wanted some more adjustability this way. So you can see the this will screw all the way in, but I screwed it out just so if I needed to move it back, I could. If I needed to move it that way, I could. And when I first put this thing together, this lever was actually parallel to the you know, Hort Horizon and this ram was closing it further. It was actually going down and not up. So I lengthened this out, I lengthened this out to get it a little bit higher. Now it goes you know, the way it should. All right, so that's my build. I hope it helps you out. I know it's probably not as good as a regular hydraulic forging press, but uh, yeah, you can put one together pretty cheaply, especially if you have a, the, 20 ton hydraulic press already sitting around gathering rust or dust in this, or sawdust in this case.